In this video, we'll be looking in Chapter 8, Section J.2, again on standard deviation. Remember from our last video that standard deviation is a measure of the spread that uses all of the data points as opposed to just two for the range and the interquartile range. And standard deviation is given by this equation. Now, in the previous video, we were given pretty basic data sets that included only a handful of numbers. And in that case, it's fairly straightforward to calculate the standard deviation. If, say, we have five numbers like this. However, remember from the first part of the chapter when we had a, had a frequency table, which I'm going to give as an example. I'll, I'll give you some example data here. Now, in this case, we actually have 10 data values, which is not a lot. We could, still do, we could still do this out by hand, but notice that several of the data values are the same. For instance, two occurs four times. And you can imagine we can get much larger data sets that have higher frequencies. And so to calculate uh, the standard deviation using the methods that we learned in the last class would be pretty challenging. So I'm going to show you a new way to calculate the standard deviation for grouped data. And we've talked about grouped data in previous videos. But I'm going to show you how to use uh, a new table and a new equation to calculate the standard deviation for grouped data. And really, the equation changes only slightly from what we have before. So here's the standard deviation for grouped data. And you know that you'll notice that there are two differences. The first being is that we have an F here in front of the square of the deviations. That F is the frequency for each data point. And we also have sigma f in the denominator instead of n. And the sigma f really is n. It's just another way of writing it. And if we, if we add up all of the frequencies, that really tells us how many data points we have. So again, it's really the same equation, just written in a different form. So let's take a look at an example. And this is actually the same data from the previous slide. And we're, we're going to calculate the standard deviation here, again using our new, our new formula, which is, which is this. And remember from the, from the previous video that we generated a table to help us determine what some of these values were. So we're going to do that again. And the first column is going to be our x column, or our data values. We're going to add a new column here, which is going to be F for frequency. And really, I'm just rewriting the data from above. So now I can scroll up. OK, the next column is going to be F times X. And notice that that doesn't really appear in our equation, but it gives us some useful information. And I'll show you that in a second. So we're going to multiply the first two columns together. right? So 0 times. 1 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, and all the way down. Now, let's pause for a moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to sum the second two columns. right? So I'm going to sum the frequency column. If I do that, that gives me 10. This number represents the total number of data points, so sample size. I'm going to sum the second column to get 20. The second number right here is actually the sum of all the data set, or sum of all the data points. And so from our pre previous videos, we know that to be sigma x. And both of these values can be used to help us calculate the mean of the data set. So x bar 
in this case for group data is really the sum of the frequencies times the data values divided by the sum of the frequencies which is 20 divided by 10 or 2. Now that we have the mean we can calculate the deviation for each data point. And this is just the same as it was in the previous video. We're going to subtract the mean from each da data point. So in this case the mean is 2 and for the first data point which is 0 we're going to subtract 2 and get negative 2. And we can fill in the column accordingly. Also we're going to square the deviations like we did in the last video. And so we come up with values for this column. Now the one additional column that we have is to multiply the squares of the deviations by the frequency. Because remember, zero is occurring once, but some of the other data values like two are occurring four times. So I need to account for that squared deviation four times. And that's, that's the numerator here in our new version of the standard deviation equation. So the last, the last column is to multiply the square of the deviations by the frequencies. So I'm going to multiply F by this column for all the rows. Now this is really the column we're after. Once we have this column, we can find the sum, which is 12. And this number becomes the numerator of our new standard deviation equation. So we have the square root of 12 over the sum of the frequencies, which we know from previous work is 10 and therefore I can approximate the standard deviation at 1.10. Let's take a look at another example. Again we're asked to find the standard deviation of grouped data but in this case we're not given the actual data points but instead we're given the class intervals. So notice we're given the frequency of data points that occur between 50 and 60, between 60 and 70, and so on. So we don't know the actual data points. Now just like with the cumulative frequency graphs, we could estimate the median for this data, even though we don't have the actual data points, we can also estimate the standard deviation. And we have to make an assumption here but it's fairly straightforward and follows the, once we've made that assumption, we can follow the process that we saw in the previous slide. And the assumption is that our X column, right, remember we're looking for data values, our first column is the X column. We're, gonna, we're going to use the midpoint of the class interval. So for the first class interval of 50, to 60, the midpoint is 55. And so the midpoint of the next class interval would be 65 and so on down the column. Once we've estimated the value of x, we can then follow the exact same process that we used in the previous slide to estimate the standard deviation. So I'll show you the completed table and then we can walk through the calculation one more time. So here is the completed table with the, the new column for x, which are assumed values and they, they come from the midpoints of the class intervals. And you can see we have the frequencies and we have frequency times the, the data value. And we actually cut out a few of the columns and just combined the last three columns into one. So we, we sort of skipped right to the end. We found the deviation, squared it, and multiplied by the frequency all in one step. 
And, and you can do that and it saves a little bit of work or in, in writing down all the numbers. So now that we have this completed table, we can once again use the equation for the standard deviation. But first, we need to find the mean of the data set. And remember, for group data, we're going to find the sum of the frequencies times the, the data values divided by the sum of the frequencies, which in this case is 2025 divided by 25. And hopefully you can see the, where those values come from from the graph above. And so our, our mean is actually an approximate here is 81. And then the standard deviation, again, comes from this equation for grouped data, the sum of the frequencies times the deviations squared divided by the sum of the frequencies, all, all underneath the square root. And so this is approximately the square root of 3,800 over 25, which is approximately... 12.3. And again, this is an estimate of the standard deviation, but it's, um, it's as good as we can get without knowing the actual data points.